It's a couple problems I have. The first problem, I'm up and it's 6.30 in the fucking morning. That's, that's the first goddamn problem. The second problem is I'm up, it's 6.30 in the morning and I have heartburn already because my wife decided to take a four hour nap after the gym and then be hungry after. I wanted ramen. So that's when we ate a ramen snack at 3.30 in the fucking morning, which is terrible for my indigestion, apparently. So that's what I am doing. I am currently suffering. Nobody told you to be old. I didn't have a choice. So 536 AD, the worst year in history. Uh, Kings and Generals is the YouTube channel. And we're here to learn a little bit something about the world that we live in. So uh, thanks for the suggestion. I always appreciate them. It's basically all we've been doing for the past couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. I'm down for some horrible history. I should have got a water. All I have Mark is coffee. Mark Twain once asserted that history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. And so historians constantly attempt to draw parallels between events of modernity and those that have already gone by. In this vein, we turn... Is that you? <laughs> and it appears. And it appears. Play. Of modernity and those that have already gone by. In this vein, we turn to the ancient world and cast our gaze back to one of the many years <laughs> no, that so rivaled silly. 2020 in its dubiously notorious status in the human imagination. Wow, I really did miss that reference, how the worst year in history and been like, it's not 2020, hardy, har, har, har. But like, I know it's not 2020. Like, it was bad, it was awful, you know, the worst year. Uh, probably since around 9-11, right, in recent history and like how awful it was universally. But like, I know it still wasn't the worst historically, right, because some really gnarly things happened in history, so. When the year 536 AD began, just short of one and a half millennia ago, the Eurasian civilizations that often serve as the subject of our videos were undergoing a seismic change. As war, politics, and other human regularities continued apace, a number of debated cataclysms occurred, which according to some scholars, made 536 the worst year in all of history. Sometimes a certain source is not translated into English, but thankfully the sponsor of this video is right there to help you learn more than 10 languages, huh. which allows which is instrumental for health, real life, classes, teachers, ecosystem, more. The semester of college gets six months free. Click the link in the description. Faithfully accompany information. Byzantine historian Procopius faithfully accompanied his generalissimo master Belisarius on the latter's conquests of both Africa and Italy during Belisarius. the 530s, observing the great general's achievements firsthand and then recording them for posterity. But in the midst well, of you. this imperial reclamation attempt, the chronicler described a phenomenon which is easy to pass off as irrelevant, but which might just be the clue to the most important episode in late antiquity. Which is Writing hard. almost certainly in 536, the tenth year of Justinian's reign, the Belisarian historian stated, It came about during this year that a most dread portent took place. For the sun gave forth its light without brightness, like the moon, during this whole year, and it seemed exceedingly like the sun in eclipse, for the beams it shed That's were good. not clear, nor such as it That's is accustomed to shed. And from the time when this thing happened, men were free neither from war nor pestilence nor any other thing leading to death. Armed with a scientific understanding of the world, even we might peer up to the heavens with unease if we witnessed our sun blotted out for an entire year, as though the world had suffered through some devastating nuclear war. With our own reactions in mind, we can barely comprehend how shocking this apocalyptic sun haze was for the religiously minded people of the 6th century. It might have been seen as a herald of the end of the world, and to many it certainly came to feel like it. 
because the observations of Procopius and several other historians of this period lack any form of explanation regarding the mysterious clouds, most likely because they had absolutely no idea what was happening. The cause long remained an elusive mystery, puzzling modern historians who attempted to glean anything from the ancient sources. However, okay, that's very interesting. It It's very ominous, right? The same year as an eclipse is the same year as uh, the worst year in history and all that. So I got that part. Um, but there's actually a really interesting story from history um, about these two like warring kingdoms and then this soothsayer shows up to talk to one king. There's a small interlude of them potentially feeding him people in this story that I'm remembering. What the fuck? But, yeah, I know. And But anyways, the point being the two clans end up going to war or kingdoms end up going to war and then during the eclipse the, all the fighting just stopped and both sides just go well I guess we're just done feuding for the rest of our lives now because there's an eclipse happening you know and that, that's what that story kind of reminds me of in, in history cataclysmic events were either created or stopped in their tracks uh, during eclipses because it literally blew people's fucking minds However, by utilizing precise modern dating techniques, such as ice core analysis and dendrochronology, the exact cause of what some scholars ominously call the 536 event can be deduced. When studying the cross-section of pine and oak tree rings within the Altai Mountains, as well as other places within the Northern Hemisphere, a trend of abnormally little growth exists beginning at the exact spot which can be cross-referenced and calibrated to represent around 536. This indicates a degree of uncharacteristic cooling, but doesn't suggest a cause by itself. To supplement this knowledge, ice cores extracted from Greenland and Antarctica dated to around 536 contain strangely large sulfate deposits volcanic glass and sulfuric acid content. Laboriously weaving all of this disparate data, the biblical dimming, the widespread cooling, abnormal chemical content and more into one coherent tapestry, most scientists combing over the 536 event ascribe responsibility to a catastrophic volcanic eruption which might have even exceeded in severity the explosion of Tambora in 1815. And there would be no way for them to know if it didn't occur in their immediate vicinity because they don't have fucking weather balloons. If you're centralized, not near a volcanic eruption, you get the ash and the soot and the coverage and the change in weather with zero description because you don't live around volcanoes. That's a pretty good one. But when he was talking about the ice core dating, right, and then the, the dimming, Gittin is actually watching Van Helsing. And that's the same storyline of Van Helsing. So I was fighting making vampire references, you know, during that entire description because I didn't want to get too far off track. But it's literally the same storyline. A volcanic eruption causes vampires to sprout out of the ground and eat people at 536 AD. As an aside, it is worth noting that the latter eruption also cause visual phenomena vaguely similar to those described by our ancient sources, such as hazy but beautiful yellow skies represented in 19th century art. This is got, it's written very well, and I'm not really, I'm really not shitting on the video with this, right, because it actually is very interesting. But it has the same National Geographic vibes as like when aliens built the pyramids, right? Have you guys ever seen those, those theories where they take all these kind of cross-reference data and make these huge scientific assumptions based on them. That's kind of what it feels like. But with way more, something that makes way more sense. For this impact well, kind of eruption is a lot easier to digest. It's been put forward everywhere from Iceland to El Salvador. But that is a detail it would be pointless to get caught on. The issues of where and what are still unresolved. While some fringe researchers go as far as decrying the volcanic perspective altogether, instead pointing to certain residues in the historical record as evidence for a particularly violent comet strike. That we will assume hilarious. the dominant eruption theory is correct, keeping in the back of our minds the possibility of wrongness. Whatever happened, yeah, and however right. it happened, the results were striking in their magnitude. I was getting ready to say, like the most of the YouTube comments, they get distracted by those 
always assume that any kind of critique or other thought process other than what the narrator is telling me means I just completely don't understand the video. I can completely understand his argument and say that might not be what happened, but that means I can still enjoy and understand the information given. So please join us on this journey because you also weren't fucking there. <laughs> so let's just let's just listen and enjoy, please. Unfortunately, convenient trade winds carried the ashy blanket across Europe and then Asia, blocking the sun's light and causing temperatures to nosedive by an average of between 1.5 and 2.5 degrees Celsius. According to some estimations, the consequence was the worst shock to Earth's ecosystem in the last 2,000 years, and the advent of the coldest decade in 2300. The effect on human society was no less devastating. Crop failures and dead harvests were endemic across the entire Eurasian landmass, a fatal thing for the chieftaincies, empires and kingdoms, who primarily relied on agriculture to feed their people and raise much needed right. taxes. In the southern part of pre-Viking Norway, for example, the entire settlement structure and social organization completely collapsed, farms were left behind, rich burials became rare, pottery production ended, yeah. and iron production decreased. It's sometimes really hard to imagine, well I mean actually no, because we're in 2021, it isn't hard to imagine anymore, because of COVID. It would be the same thing if they got had to stop working because of COVID, but without the ability of, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, growing copious amounts of crops. Like, we get it. Stores will close. People will go broke. We, we actually understand the economic areas, impact now, fines universally. were 90 to 95 percent lower than before. Denmark, Estonia, and particularly Ireland display alarming disruptions in the production of bread and the attending collapse of local societies. We have little evidence to prove this, but if one reads between the lines of the evidence we do have, it becomes be apparent that there was human starvation and suffering on a mass scale. Hmm. The same famine, exacerbated by Justinian's war in Italy, she's eating a baby, caused mothers in Liguria to eat their babies in order to survive, as recorded by the Bishop of Milan. That's Horrible. As if the cold, near eternal twilight and famine weren't enough to knock over a polity. Oh my god. Sometimes it wasn't. There was a third factor to possibly emerge from the eruption of 536. A half decade after the blast, in 541, the first instance of bubonic plague struck the Ooh. Byzantine trading nexus of Pelusium in Egypt, probably originating somewhere in the eastern steppe of northern China. Although far from being a universally accepted theory, it is widely and credibly posited that the first onset of what became Justinian's plague in the early 540s was an indirect consequence of the volcanic eruption alluded to by our ancient sources. This chain of causality requires some level of explanation. Just right. how does a volcanic eruption in Iceland or possibly elsewhere across the world cause civilization crippling plague in the distant Mediterranean. At first glance, the two disasters seem unconnected. However, of seven severe volcanic eruptions taking place over the last 2000 years, six in 44 BC, AD 626, 934, 1258, 1783, and of course 536, have resulted in a deadly period of epidemic disease in Europe, the Middle East, I could understand that. within one to five years. Yeah. For this odd trend to be pure chance is, as prominent NASA scientist R.B. Stuthers put it, a very unlikely coincidence. So what is going on here? The key to unpacking this mystery can be found in the calamitous, volcanism-induced harvest failures which so often rock pre-industrial societies, mm -hmm. the direct impacts of which we have already discussed. Yeah. It is a simple truism that if we humans do not eat properly, our body's defenses do not function properly as a right. consequence. Crucially I believe that. I, I feel like you don't need to spend this much time on it. Like I think people can quite understand. Like Famine can spread plague. You know, those things are directly... Um, uh, uh, two contributing factors that uh, have causality through most of history. Particular circumstance like it's of completely entire continents of people were almost certainly suffering from malnutrition. Yeah, malnutrition and yeah. To an unprecedented pandemic 
which then spread like wildfire. In what comes close to a perfect storm, exposure to the plague flea-bearing rats may also have been drastically increased by the volcanic dust shroud. Decreasing temperatures actually lessen the development of these insectoid parasites, but said rats were conversely even more likely to be driven into people's homes by the cold. Mm -hmm. This brought the disease. Same thing like when you have winter in Vegas, bro, your rats are coming inside. Yeah. Closer contact with humans and provided a perfect environment. Houses occupied by starving people weakened by lack of food for the plague to make the short hop from animals to humans. Exacerbated by the Byzantine Empire's cosmopolitan nature, internal supply routes, trade, and the military ventures initiated by Emperor Justinian I, the plague which came to bear the great ruler's name infected vast swaths of the Middle East and Southern Europe. Mm. Tax-paying citizens died in their millions, potentially bountiful land was left untilled, and Rome's remaining empire mm. subsequently convulsed under the pressure. And then with no food stores or anything like that, like you're talking just straight collapse, dude. The half of the population died. Wow. The door of Justinian's renaissance also slammed violently shut. Sapped to near breaking point, the emperor could not afford to decisively commit his armies to the conflict in Italy. This, accompanied by other military factors, led to a prolonged war of attrition. When that war was eventually concluded in the 550s, the territorial spoils were a desolated, depopulated wasteland, rather than the rejuvenating pot of gold that had previously served as the Roman Empire's beating heart. Although the devastation inflicted on the Byzantine Empire is by far the most famous of the plague's impacts, its Sassanid rival also suffered a less severe blow, in addition to a number of other states on its periphery. Further east still, shorter growing seasons and an inability to feed livestock probably resulted in seismic population movements and political instability within it's the just like going all area. Oh my god! Not only did this disruption it's just like not slowing the down of the Roran steppe's dominance by the Gurk Turks in 551, but it also sent wave upon wave of nomads barreling towards the settled civilizations around them, searching for better lands to occupy. One such confederation, the Avars, arrived north of the Black Sea by 550. In the Far East, tribes were shoved into China and initiated a new round of violent settlement and imperial defense. The mysterious but violent eruption of 536 wasn't allowed to settle before two further oh, explosions followed Lord. in AD 540 and 547. Ice core evidence has shown that these blasts together with the mass starvation and plagues they helped to spread, played a key role in plunging Europe into a century-long state of economic stagnation. Wow. Only in roughly 640 AD did this grim state of affairs come to an end, shown by a spike of airborne lead which signaled a resurgence in silver mining. It was the cataclysmic 536 event and its ominous darkness that led medieval historian Michael McCormick to remark how that curse year, often so bypassed in the popular historical narrative as nothing out of the norm, was the beginning of one of the worst periods to be alive, if not the worst year. Mm. All we can do is hope and act so that the coronavirus ridden 2020 was not R536, a terrible year that served as the herald of all the terrible years to come. Although a great many scientists support the point of view that the 536 eruption was the cause of the great struggle, others minimize its role. Summarizing their point of view is anti Ajava's statement that not only is there nothing in our evidence to suggest that the year 536 was a watershed moment between antiquity and the Middle Ages, it is also evident that although the cloud occasioned confusion and crop failure at the time of its appearance, its effects did not last long after it dissipated. It does not matter at the end of the day whether AD 536 was indeed just a relatively meaningless but lethal footnote, as Ajava suggests, or whether it was the watershed year in which the final embers of the ancient world were extinguished, providing the ashes for the medieval age to begin.
It goes to show that sudden disasters, whether they take the form of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, pandemics or man-made hardships such as political crises or large-scale military conflict, can completely alter the world in which we live in a staggeringly short space of time. The late 520s and early 530s seems to be an unstoppable redemption of the Roman Empire under Justinian, but just a scant decade later, those lofty dreams were almost completely out of reach and civilization seemed to be on the ropes. We always have more stories to tell, so make sure you are subscribed. Man. Oh man. That's a good one. That's a great story. There's always a good conversation to come about when there's that much that much happening without clear description uh, because of the time period in history. With our record keeping now, it's a lot easier for us to kind of like objectively look at these changes and see how they're like affecting everyday lives. It almost becomes like, you know, just the way like memes immediately um, affect like how we understand and interact with the world around us. You would think that science makes it a lot easier for us to understand like modern day interactions with like our environment versus our political outcomes. Um, and it really doesn't, you know, it really doesn't make it that much clearer. You know, when we tell the story about how the coronavirus affected our life 20 years from now, like it's going to be the same thing. Like basically it doesn't matter as long as society is still running at relative normalcy right now. It was only bad when you were going through it. You know, it was only devastating when you went through it. People talk about like the housing crash or the 2008, 2009, whenever that was in like the US, it's like the same thing. Like what caused the crash? People already are starting to forget. People are already starting to forget bank bailout, bailouts. People are already starting to forget, you know, the government propping up industry, you know? So uh, that was good though. I've never heard that uh, theory before. So I think that's super interesting. The Justinian, dude, the Justinian period has so much negative propaganda. It's actually really hard for me to even understand how he operated while the world was in such dire straits just from dire straits just from the environment. 32 and 4. I mean, it's like just when you just read over just very simple math. A very simple history like it just completely skips over that time period yeah they talk about how they were ravaged by war in that time period you know it says nothing of like the sickness or like any kind of environmental imbalance at all so that's just so interesting I just you know and I but that's great great suggestion really appreciated it let me know what you guys think if anybody's interested in this I have no idea actually but I really appreciate it I'll see you guys around peace